Hello guys, this is Vikram and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll see how to run Jenkins as a service in AWS EC2 instances. So there are certain prerequisites for running Jenkins. The first one is we need at least 4 GB of RAM and 10 GB of drive space. So this is not a hard requirement. So we can always opt for 8 GB of drive space as well. And if you're planning to install Jenkins on AWS EC2 instances, so we have to go for at least T2 medium instance type. And coming to the software requirements, we would be needing Java 8 or 11 as the runtime environment, preferably Java 11 for all the latest installations of Jenkins. And at the same time, Java 7 and all the prior versions 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, I mean 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are not supported. So we'll start off with checking whether Java is already installed in AWS EC2 by running Java hyphen version. So if the output gives you the Java version, that means that Java is already installed. But if the output say that Java command not found, then we have to install Java. So Oracle has restricted downloading Java from its official website only for the registered users. So we'll be using OpenJDK instead. So now we'll install JDK in AWS EC2. So depending upon the version of Jenkins you are running, so you should install 8 or 11 since we'll be installing the latest version of Jenkins. So we'll be going, going for OpenJDK 11. And in case if you have both the versions installed like Java 8 and 11 installed, so you should make sure that the default version is Java 11. So in this demo, we are going to see how to set the default Java version by using the alternatives utility. So using the alternative utility, you can set the default Java version in case if you have Java 8 and 11 installed in the same machine. So we'll be setting Java 11 as the default version. We can install Jenkins directly from the official website by adding the Jenkins repo and the Jenkins key. And after both these are imported, so we can just do m install Jenkins hyphen y to install Jenkins and using the system CTL or service utilities. So you can either start or stop the Jenkins instance. And if you want to see whether Jenkins is up and running, you can use systemctl utility that is systemctl status Jenkins or service Jenkins status to see the information about the Jenkins status. And if you want to see the Jenkins user information, by default with the Jenkins installation, Jenkins creates a user with the home directory as varlib Jenkins. So the same can be seen by using etc and password file. So you can cat on this file to see this information. And if you want to change the default configuration like the on default port on which Jenkins runs. So basically it runs on 8080 but you can change it to run on different port. And you can also change the Jenkins home directory. So depending upon the installation. So whether you're using Red Hat Enterprise Linux or uh, Debian distributions. So the place where the Jenkins configuration lies changes. For example for CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So it will be residing in etc sysconfig jenkins but for all the debian distributions it will be etc default jenkins so this is where you will be changing the default port from 88 to 8080 to any other available port so now let's go to the ec2 launch panel and we'll start installing jenkins in ec2 instances so i'm in my aws ec2 panel so i'll click on launch instances and i'll be selecting the amazon linux 2 ami and for the instance type i will be needing at least t2 medium because it has two vCPUs and four GB of RAM. So I'll click on configuration. So I'll be needing only one instance and click on add storage. So eight GB is sufficient for me. Add tax, so I'm skipping tax. And coming to the security group, so I'll add one more rule. Since Jenkins by default runs on 8080, so I'll be adding this custom TCP rule to allow 8080 port from anywhere. So click on review and launch launch so i'll be using the already existing key value pair click on acknowledge launch instances so while the instances are launching so you can just click on this view instances and then i'll be changing the instance name so i'll be just naming it as jenkins installation So now I'll select this instance. So currently it is in pending state, but we already got the IP address. So now it is turned to running state. I'll just copy this IP address, go to mobile XTERM. Since I already have a lot of saved sessions, so I'll be taking one of the sessions where I have the private key configured. So I'll be changing the IP address of my latest instance. 
and then I'll be logging into my instance. So once I log into my instance, so the first step which I do is installing Java. So I'll be uh, installing both Java 8 and 11 and I'll show you how to make Java 11 as the default Java installation. So first what we'll do is, so we'll open up a documentation. So here I've give, uh, given all the commands to install Java 8 and 11. So the first thing which we do is installing Java 1.8. So by using yum install hyphen y. So if you want to get this link, so you can use yum list and grep on that open JDK. So we are going to see that only. We are running yum list and then I'm going to grep open JDK. So I'd be needing 1.8. So I can install this open JDK x86 64. So as you can see, so this is the one which I wanted to install. So you can also find it from this list. So what I'll do, I'll just use sudo yum install hyphen y and then I can install this. So if I just see Java hyphen version, so I should be able to see the Java version which is 1.8. Now what I'll do is I'll install Java 11 as well. So first what I'll do, I'll install EPL packages because these are the extra extra packages needed for working with Jenkins. So if you're not installing these extra EPL packages, so Jenkins installation is not going to work. So I'm going to install this EPL package first and then i'm going to install open jdk 11 using this particular command sorry um i think we pasted the wrong command so it should be it should be open jdk 11 so now if i just check the java hyphen version so it would still point to 1.8 because I have not configured the default Java installation. So what I will do is I will use alternatives utility to configure the default Java version. So I can just use alternatives hyphen hyphen config and Java. So this will show me the list of Java installations. So basically we have Java 1.8 and Java 11 and this plus mark shows that the current uh, installation, not the current installation, the active um, you know java so i wanted to activate this so what i have to do is i have to select the selection number which is two so now if you just see the alternatives again so this time this plus went to this java 11 so the same can be verified by running java hyphen version so now it is also showing the again so i'll select the number two so now i'll just see the java version so this time if you see java version is 11 because we changed the default java uh, installation that is it is pointing to java 11 so if you are wondering how this has happened so what we can do is so, so we can backtrace so i'll just do which java so basically i'm just seeing where exactly java binary is pointing to so this is the location so if i just do ls hyphen l on this pin by java so you can see that this is being soft linked to this path and again if i do ls hyphen l on this path so you can see that this is the path which is currently active so the directory is java 11 and inside it there is a bin directory so this is the java that means if you are invoking java so that means it will invoke this particular java so now if i just configure this alternatives one more time so to point to the number one so which is basically 1.8 
and again if i do ls hyphen l and on this etc alternatives java so this time you can clearly see see that it is 1.8 that means using the alternatives utility so you can dynamically change the default java path okay so now it is being pointing to 1.8 so i'll again go to this alternatives utility and i'll switch it back to java 11 so i'll just verify it using java hyphen version and now java 11 is currently active so now what we'll do is we'll install jenkins so first what we can do is we can go to jenkins official page which is jenkins.io download and i'm going to select this centos fedora red hat and this is the way you have to install so basically you have to import the jenkins repository and import the key as well so i'm going to run both these commands and then you can directly install jenkins since we already installed java 11 and this epl packages so we don't want to install them again so i'll directly install using yum install jenkins so i'll just try to modify this command like so i'll also put hyphen y so that it won't prompt me to move ahead or not so now this is going to install jenkins for me So now Jenkins is installed. So if you want to see whether Jenkins is up and running, so I can just use the system CTL status Jenkins. So currently this, sorry, there is a typo. So it should be Jenkins. So if you see Jenkins is currently not active. So what I can do is, so directly I can run it as well as enable it by using a single option, enable hyphen hyphen now. So this will start as well as enable Jenkins to start at the boot time. So again, it is not loaded. So we'll see uh, other commands as well. So it is not here. So if you go to the official documentation installing Jenkins on the Linux, so they will give you the other options as well. So once you so you have to do re daemon reload and then only you should start the Jenkins. So I'll just use the daemon reload and then I use systemctl start Jenkins. So now if I just see the status, so you can see that Jenkins is up and running. So once Jenkins is up and running, I can access it on 8080. But let's try to explore Jenkins installation a bit. So first we'll cat on the etc.password file, so which will show the list of users. So you can see that Jenkins installation has created a Jenkins user and uh, this is the user id this is the group id this is short description about this user and if you see jenkins user has this as the jenkins home so valib jenkins is the home assigned to this jenkins user but he has no shell access so now if i just go to this particular path which is basically jenkins home so you can see various other folders like the jobs notes plugins secrets users so we'll come back to this complete Jenkins configuration once we do, once we run at least one job. So now let's see where we can configure the default port and Jenkins home. So inside etc sysconfig. So there will be a file known as Jenkins. So I'm just going into we are into this file. So this is where Jenkins home is currently hard coded. And if you scroll to the down, so this Jenkins will run as the Jenkins user and uh, this is the port on which jenkins listens so you can always change this port and then reload the jenkins daemon so currently we are not doing this because we'll be working on the default port itself so now what we'll do so since jenkins is up and running so we'll go to the browser just take the ip address of your jenkins go to the browser and access jenkins on port 8080 So now uh, for unlocking Jenkins, you have to give it the default password. So basically it will be in your Jenkins home, which is valid Jenkins. There will be a folder called secrets and inside it, there will be a initial admin password. So just copy this link and then just to cat and paste that. So there will be user token. So this is the initial token. So just copy it and enter it as the administrator password. And now it will ask you to install all the suggested plugins. Uh, or um, you know or you can select the plugins manually 
So I'll install all the suggested plugins because I don't want to select them individually. So this would take at least two to three minutes of time to completely install and go to the next process. Now if you see Jenkins installation process is completed, so I'll be going ahead and creating the first user. So I'll be using admin as the username and I'll be giving it an, a password and full name I am just going to leave it as admin and the email I can just give it as email any email and then I'll click on save and continue and this is the instance configuration basically there is a uh, one use case with this Jenkins URL because if you want to send some email notifications to the users in case if your job has failed so Jenkins is going to use this Jenkins URL environment variable to point to the current URL in the email notifications. So if your Jenkins configurations, uh, Jenkins instances, uh, IP has changed, so you have to make sure that you update it in the Jenkins configuration later. So that is not mandatory, but I am going to show you how to do that when we do various freestyle jobs. So for now, just click on save and finish and start using Jenkins. So this is the Jenkins dashboard. So we'll stop uh, here now in the next session we are going to explore more in depth into Jenkins dashboard That's it for this video guys if you like our video consider subscribing to our youtube channel and joining our facebook group The links are given in the description below you can also scan the QR codes being displayed in this video And for any training requirements you can join our telegram channel where we post regular updates on our upcoming trainings You can also whatsapp us on the number being shown here You can also drop us an email for any kind of training inquiries Thank you.